the government thinks that they are more smartest than the people. Yeah. The government think that they are more powerful than mm -hmm. thinking, so the, the people can think. So mm -hmm. they stole medicines, they stole toys, and this is a, this is a kind of virus or something that can infect the society. Mm -hmm. I saw with my, my own eyes. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Lawrence Reed, the president of the Foundation for Economic Education, or FEE, which is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm here uh, today to interview Javier Garcia Hernandez. Javier, who is 37 years of age and a native-born Venezuelan, is here in Atlanta to talk about his experiences in Venezuela, a country wracked by socialism and by hyperinflation and uh, what some would say is near ruin economically. Javier, welcome to Atlanta and to FEE. Uh, thank you, Mr. Reed. I really appreciate it. We're glad to have you. And I know that in the course of our brief interview, we'll be talking about events in Venezuela and uh, what some of the uh, recent uh, very sad developments are. But first, a little bit more about you. Uh, you're 37 years of age. Yes, sir. You're an architect. Yes. And... Uh, uh, tell me more about how you came to ideas of uh, liberty. Since I was a kid, I always uh, loved the liberty. And I, I never can imagine that I will be in a socialist, in a dictatorship. So that's why right now I'm here fighting for liberty, justice, and freedom. I, I became acquainted with you uh, about a year or so ago through uh, Facebook. And, uh, and then we communicated uh, by other means as well. But I didn't meet you in person, face to face, until just yesterday, this, the uh, 2nd of January, yes. here in 2016. Uh, I have to say, I've been, I've been very impressed with what a thoughtful person you are, uh, that uh, you've come through some very difficult times in Venezuela, uh, and that you really are not too optimistic about the near term for Venezuela. Things seem to be getting worse. Well, I think uh, Venezuela, uh, for me, I love Venezuela. Actually, I, I, I am here. I am not the, the only voice that you are hearing. Mm -hmm. You are here, the voice of millions of Venezuelans who are suffering the consequence of being a, a country socialist and communist, supported by Fidel Castro and that um, ideas of Hugo Chavez who discriminate all the people who think different, and the people right now it's suffering uh, the consequence mm -hmm. of that. And the economy, and the um, human rights, and all that stuff are right now um, very, very uh, in a bad situation. Actually, I was reading the news, and the church, Catholic Church, and the Pope say that we have to still in the fight with a pacific protest, protest but in a um, in a deepest way, you know, in, in a in a hard way. Uh, okay, in a, in a much more aggressive, mo much uh, more uh, powerful mm -hmm. protest in a pacific way. Mm -hmm. It's a constitutional right, and we are in the right side of the history. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that uh, before our interview is finished, I, I certainly want you to tell us more specifically about uh, what life in Venezuela is like today. But let's turn the clock back a little bit first. How did Venezuela get into this mess where uh, uh, the whole world is, is watching it descend into economic uh, ruin? How did it uh, go from being one of the richest countries in Latin America to now one of the poorest? Well, I, I, I guess I can resume that in a one word. It's socialist. Um, another word can be populist of left. Um, the Venezuela... Have, has suffered in many of the populist uh, different way. First, um, in the past, was the populist of, of right, and now is the populist of left. But Venezuela has never been in a liberty. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it's a communist and a military um, without food, without medicines, with the highest inflation of the world. And this is a big problem because there's no, many people dying right now. There's a, a lot of people in jail, like Leopoldo Lopez and Daniel mm -hmm. Ceballos. 
They are good people. They are in jail with no trial, no justice, just put in the jail for thinking different. So that's why I'm here right now mm -hmm. telling the world because it's a wall building by the communist socialist mm -hmm. regime. Um, and the people can receive the information about Venezuela. Well, how would you respond to uh, uh, an American or anyone from outside of Venezuela who might say, but uh, this was a matter of choice. Venezuelans voted yeah. for uh, Chavez. They yeah. voted for Maduro. Uh, so they're simply getting what uh, they were promised. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a consequence, the populists of right, um, and that's why the people vote uh, for Hugo Chavez. And right now the people didn't know because we are, um, we never suffer uh, uh, socialism and communism and um, uh, Castro ideas. Mm -hmm. It's the first time, I guess, the people right now knows what the socialism is. Mm -hmm. And the people, it's, it's too late because the dictatorship is very... Um, very powerful because mm -hmm. they have the guns, we have the power of the military, they have the money, and they have a change control of the economy, mm -hmm. and they have the, it's more than 100 people in jail right now, and the people are afraid, the borders are closed, mm -hmm. you just can't walk from Colombia sometimes, and I think it's going to be worse because the people are tired mm -hmm. to fight this more than 50 years fighting for his rights and now the people are very weak. Within the past uh, month or two, Americans saw many stories coming out of Venezuela and I wonder if you'd care to comment on a few. One is the story about the um, seizure of millions of toys uh, intended for children that the government seized and then later uh, redistributed uh, somehow. And the other uh, prominent story has been uh, Venezuelan inflation, that in an effort to somehow deal with that, uh, the Maduro government uh, announced that all of the 100 Bolivar notes in circulation, which is about 80% of the money supply, would be withdrawn. And you had only a matter of days before you could turn them in, even though they had no plan to replace them. Yes. Then they had to extend that into January of 2017. Can you tell us what you think of those events in the context of the larger struggle that you've seen under socialism? Are they in any way emblematic or are they out of the blue, you know, strange occurrences you weren't expecting? Well, the first event that you say that uh, the government stole the toys, that's right. That's right. That's um, one part of the um, expropriation that the government does. Um, against the private companies mm -hmm. and they say you are guilty by our economy disaster so I can stole your toys. So and it's so, not the first expropriation. No, right? I mean, they've has, been doing this for uh, years. In the industry of um, food, the industry of medicines, mm -hmm. the industry of construction, all mm -hmm. the, the private, mm -hmm. you know, the communist and the socialist things that the capitalism is the um, is a problem in the world, mm -hmm. you know? And the companies, private companies, are the enemy or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why the, um, the government take those companies mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, now, and now the toys, which... And now the toys. It's a populist of left. And what, are, what did they tell the people they gave the toys to? Uh, remember us at election time or... Or uh, we're special, worship us. Uh, uh, that was for Christmas time, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. For kids, for the government Christmas government is Santa Claus. Yeah, mm -hmm. Santa Claus. The government thinks that they are more smartest than the people. Yeah. The government thinks that they are more powerful than mm -hmm. thinking, so the, the people can think. So mm -hmm. they stole medicines, they stole toys, and this is, uh, this is a kind of virus or something that can infect the society. Mm -hmm. I saw with my, my own eyes. Mm. What about the, the inflation and specifically the uh, uh, demand that people turn in their 100 Bolivar notes by a certain date? Do you care to comment on, on that? Yeah, that second idea of you, it's, um, I guess, um, the inflation is the most highest inflation in the entire world. <clears throat> Sorry, entire world. So it's generated by the control of change. 
and the destruction of the all the companies, private companies, mm -hmm. and the government just leave uh, for oil. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a um, free market. Mm -hmm. So that's why I guess um, that's the, the the inflation, the most highest inflation in Thai world. So mm -hmm. it's a consequence of the socialist and, and populist and communist ideas. And it, it, sorry, it, 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 that happened in the entire world, in mm -hmm. every country who has tried that mm -hmm. system. But if, uh, if I were speaking to Mr. Maduro, your president, or any other uh, official in the Venezuelan government, they would say it's not socialism that's causing these problems, it's Capitalism. the United States, yes. or it's yeah, the capitalism that they have left, which is minimal. Uh, uh, Tell me, what's the reaction that, what is your reaction to that charge that they're in this fix because of capitalism or because of the United States in some way? Well, I think the people in, in Venezuela is one of the most um, fighter and smarter people, and they know that it's not true. Um, it's like a history of Fidel Castro always, um, Gil, um, United States, you know, and mm -hmm. um, the people can't believe that mm -hmm. right now. But yeah. I think it's too late in a kind of way because now it's a dictatorship, yeah. um, aggressive and hostile, and we don't have uh, any choice. We try to get some votes and elections, mm -hmm. and the government always do what they want to do. So I think one of the messages for... Uh, people elsewhere in the world about this is uh, don't let the concentration of power get out of hand. Yeah. But the moment you start down that path, we're going to give government a lot more power. We're going to expect a lot more from it. We're going to rely on ourselves less and on government more. You set into motion these forces that ultimately with the concentration of power, you might wake up one day and find yourself unable uh, to deal with the situation or to escape it. That's what Venezuelans are now finding, right? Yeah, that's what happened in Venezuela right now. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us uh, more about, uh, for the ordinary Venezuelan, who may not have very much and, and may not uh, even have enough to buy a plane ticket to leave the country, what's he thinking right now? Is this, is this a permanent way of life, this chaos? It's a totally chaos right now. And that's why Leopoldo Lopez calls the salida, the exit. Uh, the exit of socialists. Leopoldo the, being the uh, imprisoned activist who yes. some think uh, sh uh, could be and should be president of Venezuela someday. Yeah, someday I hope so. Also, it's Antonio Ledesma, Daniel Ceballos, and many people are, yeah, right now because they call to the elections, they call mm -hmm. to the, the exit, La mm -hmm. Salida, and they want to another Venezuela, mm -hmm. another Venezuela in a free market, in a liberty, mm -hmm. in a... Um, in a force of the people that is more powerful than the government, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I guess we are still in the fight mm -hmm. for our rights, and we are going to do more work mm -hmm. for that because there are millions of people. Mm -hmm. And what you say that, how is every day in our country? It's a disaster, it's a chaos because people die about medicines, without medicines, the people don't have any mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. The people can stay in the line about two or three days just for a packet of rice mm -hmm. or chicken or something. And the people is more and more when time uh, go fast and the time go uh, forward, the people came to a, in a limbo or something. Mm -hmm. the, the people uh, stay like, uh, what are we going to do now? Mm -hmm. So they depend um, to the government and they demand to the government food and medicine. The, the people are very weak right now, mm -hmm. but it's, we're still in the fight. Now you've had almost 20 years of uh, radical socialist uh, rule under Chavez and now Maduro. Yes. I'm interested in what has the government done in the education system over those years? Uh, what kind of freedom is still left, uh, if any? In education, can you do you have private schools? Do you have homeschooling? Are you are schools able to teach what they want, or is the government trying to tell them what they can teach? Well, 
the Venezuela have two systems. One is a uh, private, and the other one is a uh, the government. Um, the government system. Right now, the government system just eliminate uh, biology and maths and physics and all the stuff and include even they eliminate um, Catholic church in schools. In this private is at, in, in at any grade level or uh, for everybody. Eliminating biology, math, physics, and what are they um, putting in its place? Marx and socialist ideas, and Fidel Castro ideas, and Hugo Chavez ideas, ah. and stuff. Oh boy. Uh, there's so much more you could tell people, but if you uh, could tell Americans in a couple minutes what they should learn from what's happened in Venezuela, what would that be? I think the states are very lucky, and the people maybe don't know about it. The people, I invite, I, I say, go to Venezuela and see what happened in socialism. Um, I was talking about those uh, walls mm -hmm. uh, building by the government to the people can know the truth, mm -hmm. but now you can find on your foundation or many foundations on social media many information mm -hmm. about it. So I guess the people of the United States get, get information about and start to enjoy why look you mm -hmm. are in this country with liberty that you have. Well, you, you say to Americans that they should go to Venezuela and see socialism firsthand. Yes. Well, there have been some Americans who have done that. Uh, some noted celebrities from Hollywood like Danny Glover and Sean yeah. Penn who came back to, from their visits to Venezuela a few years ago and said, uh, this is a, a great thing that's happening there. How, how do you respond to that? Well, money can do anything. I <laughs> guess it's for money. When Champagne comes to Venezuela, he comes to my state, Táchira. Mm -hmm. He went to La Fria. It's a city near of my city. And when I was there, I was looking medicine for my mother. And I say, oh, this guy say Venezuela, it's amazing because he don't have his mother mm -hmm. uh, sick in, in this country mm -hmm. trying to find some medicines. Mm -hmm. I guess it's just for fame or, or say I was with Hugo Chavez and mm -hmm. stuff and I got some friendship over there, some mm -hmm. like a ego sort of oh. uh, ego ideas or maybe money, I don't know. Um, many actors of Hollywood has pay and this is not a secret mm -hmm. we would have paid million of dollars mm -hmm. like was yours and that was my money yeah and i don't want to pay for it mm -hmm. so they took my money and say hey man take your yeah. take some kind of dollar so uh, this is not justice this mm. is not liberty because the people die from yeah. food medicines uh, and mm -hmm. all the stuff uh, one last question for you, Javier. Uh, if you could look ahead in your crystal ball, uh, how is this all going to be worked out? Is, is Venezuela headed to a violent revolution or to some North Korea-style permanent stagnation and tyranny? Uh, what's ahead? I think God can do any miracle when he wants. It looks and like I, he's going to take I, one. I believe, <laughs> I, yeah, I believe in God. Um, I believe in Jesus. And I pray all days mm -hmm. for those people down there, you know. I can be um, in peace here, thinking about my country, thinking about my people. And I wish Venezuela could be get out of that mm -hmm. system, that socialist. Um, but it's too many years infected. The kids are infected by ideas. With the, for example, the kid who has five years old when Hugo mm -hmm. Chavez was alive, and now they have 20 years or 25 years. Listen, uh, United States are the enemy. Uh, United States are the guilty about our disaster in economy. And I'm afraid that that can bring severe consequence, mm -hmm. negative. Mm -hmm. Well, we certainly hope for the best. And all of us here at FEE uh, want to express our appreciation to you for sharing your story. And uh, like you, we hope that uh, Venezuela someday will be a free country once again. Yes, I, I, I want to thank you and thank the FEE Foundation for 
or your hospital in what you do it's an amazing job and I pray every day for God that someday we can have a nice country as used to be Venezuela mm -hmm. before the socialism and Hugo Chavez. Thank you, Javier. Thank you. We've been talking today to Javier Garcia Hernandez, 37 years of age from Venezuela, a country racked by socialism, hyperinflation, and increasing tyranny at the hands of the government of Nicolas Maduro. We hope for the best. We hope to see Venezuela free again. Thank you.